you know, when, when, when I started off, I, I was explaining really the idea behind the show and that, uh, you know, it, it was about this journey we've been, we've been on together, we've shared together. And um, whenever I meet someone, invariably they'll say, oh, you know, Greg, that brain salad surgery got me through university. Yeah. Yeah. You know, one thing or the other. There's, there's, there's a story almost. And that's what music does. It passes from one soul to another. It goes through the air, unseen, but it touches people. And in your lifetime, I don't know about you, but I'm sure you do, and I do, attach certain moments, not necessarily single moments, but periods or, 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 or visions of time, in, in moments in time, with a song, with certain, with certain music, you know. And so, um, as you've heard, I mean, a couple of things I've told you, and I'll tell you some more as we go on, but stories that, you know, were, were connected to the songs for me. And um, so really, what I'd like to do now is, is give you a chance to tell me any stories that you've got about the music and the way it's just been, been involved in your life. Or indeed, if you've just got any questions to ask that have uh, been bugging you for a while, um, please, don't, whatever it is, I'm, I'm happy to answer it. So, there's uh, Andre and I think Dennis here with microphones. And just put your hands up and they'll come along with a microphone. And then you'll be able to sing a small song and ask a question. <laughs> it's the end of that then, right? Hello. Hi, Greg. Hi, man. Hi. Um, What's your name? My name is Eric. Eric, hello. Hi. Uh, first of all, thank you very much for the wonderful show. Uh, um, I was wondering if you could uh, give us a little bit, a bit of a background on the song uh, called uh, Lay Down Your Guns, Remember Second Paul. Well, it is one of those things that I feel quite passionately about, you know, um, Farewell to Arms was another song. You know, I'm not a big protest songwriter, you know. You know, I'm not sure about how much it really, but now and again, I just have to say, you know, that weapons kill people. And I'm just one of those who believes that if you could pull back from that, it would be better, you know. I just think we need to but, you know, I'm not really a political type of um, person. I just, when I see people die for a piece of sand. So that was my answer to that question, I hope. I hope. It was, they're just anti-war statements, basically. Next question, please. Uh, hello. Hello. I have a question about your music. I'm a great fan. Thank but you. When you played at the 1970 Cal California Jam, you played a version of The Sage that was different from the recording that I learned. Could you please tell me, a young study, this person who wants to learn what you did, what sort of changes you performed? Oh, I should know. <laughs> Constantly, when I perform songs, I kind of, it's strange, because in a way, I, my ambition is to make them like the record. You bought the record, you want to hear it done live. So my first port of call is to make it like, or as good as the record. But then there's something special about a live performance, that you want to see something special. You're there only, you know, here we are, this one moment in time, and no one else is sharing it, just us. And when it's over, we, we've been together for, and I, and I always like to try and do something with these pieces that is just a little different, just, you know, change a little here if I can, make it a little bit better there. That is what performance is about. You know, that's what you see me struggling to do, is to try and make it a little bit better every time, and different every time. 
it also, you know, it helps me to um, stay fresh. You know, if I'm if I'm thinking of new new ways around new chord inversions, it helps me to keep the piece fresh in my own mind. And um, and so that's probably the best explanation I can give to you. Pretty nice question. Thank you. Next question, Andre. Hello, Greg. How are you? My name is Joseph. Hello. How are you? Doing? When I was about 15, Touch and Go came out. Just yeah. to hear that come right now from King Crimson from my aunt playing it in Emerson Lincoln Park. Yes. It's just a song that I play for my kids now, being five and nine, they love it. And it was just such a bridge when I was 15 having that song came out. It was just unbelievable. And it just sounded great, man. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Of a little baby holding the King Crimson cover. <laughs> what a terrible thing to do. I mean, a screaming face, and this baby was really into it. And he really loved the little. Dreadful. Yes. Hey. Hi, Greg. I'm Karen. Hello, Karen. Um, everybody always wonders about the angel on the gold chain. <laughs> the more important is the lyric from Pirates, yeah. but to me, more important, what happened to it? We know it was stolen. It got stolen. Yeah, but in what country did it get stolen? I don't know. No, you don't know? I just don't know. Yeah. Um, Are you going to make another one? I might do one day, you know, yeah. just for, for sentimentality. But, sure. um, it was yes, uh, just a beautiful design. Somebody made it for me, <clears throat> and it was, um, I, can't, I can't remember, but it was platinum angel with white wings. Thing. And, I, and, I, and I really loved it so much. I actually wrote it, wrote it into a into a song, into Pirates. And um, but you know, material things really don't have very much value. So you know, it's not something I lie with and worry. Next question, Andre. Hi, Greg. My name is Jimmy. Hello, Jimmy. Um, yes, I'd like to know when you uh, when Yes toured with uh, Emerson Lake and Palmer. What memories do you have with them? Oh, well, you know, look, I used to live with Chris Squire in a flat in London. People, people always think that Yes and ELP were always at each other's throats. But, it, but it's not true. We had a sort of, I don't know, there was a sort of friendly rivalry. They used to call us Henderson, Snake and Charmer. <laughs> and we used to call them Maybe. The funny story was, I remember one time, we, uh, this was in the day, we used to fly by, we had private jets, and um, Yes wanted a private jet. And I remember we were competing with, with the same charter companies, and they insisted on having their name on the side of the jet. And uh, so one day, and Chris told me this story, so it's quite all right. When I, one day they, they turn up at the airport, there's their jet, you know. And on the fuselage, it's got a it, yes, word the fuselage. So they're, you know, they're happy about that. They think you know, when they land, they're going to have yes, and the plane's going to look good. They get on the jet, it takes off. It gets up to altitude, and all of a sudden, there's a slurping sound. And then a pop. Bang! And the plane goes from 500 miles an hour to 250 miles an hour in a second. And what's happened is, to put yes on the fuselage, they've done it with, with these huge stickers and adhesive. And when they got up to the altitude, the sticker ripped off and blew back in the jet and popped it. And now they had one sticker and one engine left. Can you imagine? All you're waiting for is, and you're gone. You know? as, as it happened, they landed okay, and, um, and, and, and it all was well. But um, as I said, I'm very, very uh, close to Chris, known him all my life. Uh, and uh, that's about it, really, on the Yes Front. We get on together, and um, of course, they're a wonderful band who've sustained for many, many years. I really to respect them. Hey, Greg. Hello. My name is Mark. 
Hello, Mark, how are you doing? We've been coming to see you for 42 years. It's been great, great. I have a question for you. I go to, still go to lots of concerts, probably more than I ever went when I was younger. But what kind of shows do you go to? What do you go see? What kind of music? Um, well, I went, the last, I could be the last two artists I saw. One was Andrea Bocelli, uh, who is, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm friendly with him, and he's, he's a wonderful singer and a, and a big fan of the LP family. And so that was, that was one of the last ones. And the other one was, I went to see Cher. <laughs> In, uh, in LA, I mean, I just love her voice. She's a great singer. So those were the two, the last two shows I, I attended. Next one is there another one. Yes, I'm great. There we are. Hi. Hello. My name's Audrey, and it's been such a joy to listen to you. Hello, Audrey. Um, but really, ultimately, I watch the audience, and I've listened to all your albums, especially your live ones, and you know, all of them. And I just really want everyone to get up on their feet. Yeah! I, I feel like we're letting you down by sitting down. Uh, 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 not at all. Not okay. at all. I think, look, this is just about what you want it to be. You know, it's about, it's about really retracing those footsteps through that journey and enjoying that. If you want to dance, be my guest. If you want to sit there, though, just sit there and so we are. Because you make it all possible. Had you not bought those records, this journey wouldn't have taken place. So be proud. Enjoy it. It was yours. It's your dream. One more question, then. One more, please. Hi, Greg. I, my name's Carl. Hello, Great Carl. Great to meet you. Well, uh, <laughs> back in 1977, yes. when I nine-year-old CEO at uh, Behaving Cop, seventh row center. To this day, that's the, that's the greatest show he's ever seen. I, I practically had to carry him out of it. Oh my God. But uh, my one little question I wanted to ask you was, um, after John Atwistle passed away, you did a couple songs with The Who, yes. Real Good Looking Boy, and uh, I forget the other song. But, uh, I was wondering, how, how was that? How was it? it Pete Townsend's E5 Studios, um, all of that. I did, I, 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 I was on the Who's last single. Um, I do quite a lot of work for charity with Roger and, uh, and Robert Palmer. We do, uh, um, uh, it's, a, it's a teenage cancer trust in, in England. And so we do that every year. And so, uh, you know, that's how it came about, really. And uh, Pete and Roger, I think they're, regular bass player gone missing or something had happened to him. And I went in and did it and it was, it was a lovely experience. You know, they're, they're a strange couple. <laughs> <laughs> they're, a bit, they're a bit like some sort of old married couple. But of course, in the, in the moment they start, and Pete's a wonderful talent. Sensational guitar player, really. Very special talent. And, uh, and together, of course, they they make the sound that is the who. Yeah. And that's what's um, special about them. So that was a really nice thing to do. But I, I love playing with um, other people. I do some concerts sometimes with Trans Siberian Orchestra. Do you know what I'm saying? Sometimes I come across at Christmas and, and play with them. They're, they're good mates. Um, and Ringo, I did. And I just enjoy playing with other people. The strangest thing is, you know, when you have um, success as, as, a, as a rock and roller, you end up playing the same 20 songs all your life. <laughs> it's true, you know, because that's what people want to hear. And you just don't get to play enough other stuff. So when you do get a chance to go and play with someone else, it's real, it's a real relief. It's almost like a relief. Well, uh, thank you very much for these lovely questions. And, uh, thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, I'd like to, to carry on by uh,